Governor Asakura attended the inauguration ceremony of the National Railway, where the Toei Subway Line 15 officially commenced operation. Accompanied by a squad of police officers and security personnel, he boarded the train with heightened vigilance, having received a terrorist threat letter sent to his private residence under a pseudonym, stating, You haven't forgotten the uprising four years ago, have you? The spirits will punish you. Conan and the detective boys followed Professor Agasa to see the space train exhibition. Conan kept track of the ceremony's progress via phone, hoping nothing untoward would happen. As Professor Agasa entered the tunnel, the phone signal became intermittent, preventing Conan from watching the ceremony live. Setting the phone aside, Conan observed his surroundings closely. Suddenly, a figure appeared on the tunnel sidelines, holding something peculiar in hand. Conan was startled, realizing that the subway line ran directly above this tunnel, with the two lines parallel for about a kilometer. Upon closer inspection of the tunnel ceiling, Conan spotted pre-installed bombs, terrorists planned to detonate the tunnel, causing the Toei train to derail and resulting in catastrophic consequences. Conan skateboarded toward the bomb, blocking other vehicles from moving forward. Simultaneously, using Shinichi's voice, he called the police on the Toei train to halt it. At that moment, the timed bomb began to detonate, causing the train to slide off the tracks and hurtle forward. Fortunately, thanks to Shinichi's call, the train decelerated and stopped just as it descended onto the lower track. Casualties were significantly reduced, but Shinichi requested that the police keep the incident confidential and refrain from disclosing his involvement to the media. It seemed the terrorist had no intention of stopping after this incident. Through his investigation, Conan discovered that Governor Asakura had commissioned the construction of a dam in Niigata, which took five years to complete. However, there was significant opposition from the locals, and this Sunday, the village would commemorate the fifth anniversary of the dam construction. Conan and the detective boys, along with Mori, Ran, and Sonoko, planned to visit for both leisure and investigation. The winter snow blanketed everything in white. The mountainous forests were quite pristine and tranquil, offering plenty of snow-related activities that kept the children entertained. While retrieving a village map near the dam area, Conan inadvertently encountered two men, one of whom accidentally dropped a stun gun from his pocket. He said Tokyo is pretty dangerous, so as a habit, he usually carries a stun gun with him. Later in the evening, everyone gathered to discuss souvenirs. Ran suddenly remembered her childhood sweetheart and called Shinichi. She marveled at the ethereal night sky combined with the light and falling snowflakes, a truly romantic scene. Ran wished Shinichi could see it. Meanwhile, Conan was hiding behind a nearby tree, experiencing emotions similar to Ran's. Both silently admired the special scenery. Ran asked about Shinichi's favorite souvenir, and he wrote down in the snow, deciding on an L-shaped alarm clock. Just as they were being as romantic as a Korean drama, the kids, sneaking out for a night adventure, forced Conan to turn off Rant's phone and follow them. He forgot to erase the words in the snow until he startled back and found Rand there reading them. As for the kids, all three snowmobile drivers, with Genta at the wheel, were carelessly skidding and swerving at the snowfield. Their sled got lost and flipped. Luckily, due to the thick snow layer, nobody was hurt. Relying on their detective badges, Conan and Hybra managed to snowboard over to help the kids. However, with the large number of kids and Conan's snowboard not being able to handle all the weights, they had to wait for a passing vehicle to ask for help. Luck smiled upon them when Mr. Mudo's car passed by and offered the kids a ride. He was staying in a mountain house for sculpting and was one of the villagers who opposed the dam construction, so he left the village to live in the mountains. Back at the hotel, the kids were scolded for their antics. At the hotel, Mori was recognized by a group of teenagers, comprising five friends who reunited after eight years. First was Mudo, who had just helped the kids, Hikawa, talkative and always carrying a stun gun, had a strained relationship with Mudo as he initially opposed the dam construction but later changed his mind and moved to Tokyo to avoid trouble. Fuyumi a nurse in the village had a son who had an accident in the mountains eight years ago and still hasn't woken up. Mizuki, a girl with a perpetually sad face, 
lost her younger brother in an accident eight years ago, and her 18-year-old sister was killed in a car accident. Lastly, Yumeo, who drunkenly killed Mizuki's sister and served two years in prison. The long-standing conflicts had caused the five close friends, who were once inseparable, to avoid each other's company. Now, their reunion was solely for the upcoming festival. The next day, while the kids were playing in the snow, Fuyumi's son, Toma, woke up from his eight-year slumber and expressed his desire to play in the snow. Fuyumi tearfully embraced her son, overjoyed that he had finally awakened. However, Toma still couldn't remember what had happened on the day of the accident. Later, Mori's and Mizuki's group went to Swan Lake, where Toma had the accident. This time, Mori was cunning as Mizuki began to flirt. She let her hair down, put on contact lenses, and wore makeup, looking more attractive than ever. Arriving at Swan Lake, they found Hikawa slumped nearby, motionless. When Mori touched him, they discovered he was dead, with only the victim's footprints in the snow. Mori presumed he had suffered a stroke while walking. However, Conan noticed that Hikawa's stun gun, which he always carried, was missing, leading him to suspect foul play. It seemed someone had created the crime scene to appear as if Hikawa's footprints were those of the victim. The police arrived and took the victim to the hospital for examination. Initially, they determined the cause of death to be a stroke, but further tests were needed for confirmation. Hikawa's four friends were interrogated, with only Mizuki having an alibi, as she was with Mori's family at the time. Following Hikawa's footprints, they found they originated from Mr. Muto's house. When asked why, Muto cryptically replied, why does anyone know why? Suddenly, Yumeo, Hikawa's friend, stood up and added fuel to the fire. Wasn't he the one who hated Hikawa and wanted to kill him multiple times? Because of their disagreement over the dam project and, more importantly, both of them liking Mizuki in the past. Things began to get confusing. Was Hikawa's death related to the subway bombing? On the way back, Toma cried over his beloved dog, who had died a few years ago. He couldn't accept that eight years had passed, and everything, including his friends, had changed. Seeing this, the detective boys came to console him. The water crystals shimmered like diamond dust in the sunlight, fascinating the kids and persuading Toma to join them. However, upon seeing them, Toma mentioned he had seen them before and suddenly felt a painful headache as he struggled to remember. So, the kids persuaded Toma to go to the location where the accident happened in hopes of helping him remember. Meanwhile, Conan suddenly recalled the newspaper article about the case from eight years ago that Hikawa had in his hand when they first met. The backside featured the armed robbery of a jewelry store that resulted in the store director's death, with the culprit escaping with 1 billion yen and still at large. This incident occurred on the same day as Toma's and Yumeo's accidents. Clearly, when Yumeo saw the front page of the newspaper, he had an inexplicable expression. Perhaps? But before Conan could finish his thought, the telephone lines exploded, rendering both landline and mobile phones useless. The detective boys was being pursued by someone wielding a gun, who fired shots continuously into the snow. This chase triggered Toma's memories of that fateful night eight years ago, when he had also run like this. Despite the barrage of bullets, the shooter's marksmanship was lacking, so the old folks managed to shield the kids and survive. Conan and Hybra slid on their boards to the kids' location, where they hid in a cave and attempted to make their way back to the dam. By this point, Conan had identified the culprit. Have you guessed who it is? Yes, it's Yumeo. Eight years ago, burdened by debt, he had resorted to robbing a jewelry store in Tokyo. While fleeing back to the village, he caused an accident that claimed the life of Mizuki's sister. Confused about what to do, he stumbled upon Toma by chance, who had witnessed the accident. Yumeo took Toma into his car and tried to figure out what to do with him. When Toma woke up, he saw the bright light from the jewelry, hence why seeing the diamond dust that day triggered some memories for him. Trying to escape, Toma was pursued, leading to him falling unconscious and being stranded on the mountain for eight years. As for the precious stones, Yumeo had hidden them at his grandmother's house while he was imprisoned for a few years for causing the fatal accident. 
Upon his release, he discovered the dam had been built. His grandmother's house was now inside the dam, and the only way to retrieve the gemstone was to breach the dam. However, there were two obstacles, first, the governor's presence at the festival, which would attract unwanted attention from the press, so he decided to use a bomb to assassinate the governor. Currently, he had cut off communication lines to prevent information from leaking outside and planned to detonate the dam before the journalists arrived. The second obstacle is Hikawa. He was killed because he knew Yameo was the culprit of the robbery. Out of greed, Hikawa wanted a share, and Yameo even tried to pin the blame on Muto. Now, Conan has to prevent the dam from exploding. Crawling through the tiredness, the kids barely make it to the dam. So, Conan goes alone to the guard's room, where both guards are knocked out from electric shocks. Against the dam wall, Conan sees the bombs attached to it. Before he could contact the police, Yameo appears behind him holding a stun gun, ready to strike. Conan manages to escape outside, but Yameo follows, firing his gun wildly. He coldly raises his gun, mocking that Conan will meet his end first. Regardless, in 15 minutes, this place will explode due to his bomb. Just as he's about to squeeze the trigger, a bullet pierces through his shoulder, saving Conan's life. The shooter turns out to be none other than the top FBI agent Akai. Just kidding. It's Mizuki, who skillfully disarms him and takes control of the bomb. However, Yameo rushes to grab the detonator. On Conan's end, he prepares a tranquilizer dart, causing Yameo to pass out. Everything ends peacefully as the criminal is rendered unconscious. However, Toma and the detective boys arrive, and his face suddenly turns pale pointing at Mizuki and shouting, it's her, even though she wore glasses, I still recognize her. The truth begins to unravel as Toma witnessed Mizuki and her sister arguing. In the midst of the altercation, the sister falls onto the main road, and unfortunately, Yameo's car passes by, claiming her life. So Mizuki has been tormented for the past eight years, but she also fears that one day Toma will wake up and spill everything. After the boy wakes up, Mizuki deliberately changes her hairstyle and doesn't wear her glasses to avoid recognition, yet Mori mistook her actions as flirting with him. She even chased and shot at the detective boys and Toma in the snowy mountains. But the truth is, she only wanted to scare them, because if she had shot for Rayal, they would have been goners ages ago. Mizuki bursts into tears and screams in anguish for her torment throughout the years. But her close friend Mudo comforts her believing that speaking out is the only way to relieve her conscience. At that moment, they suddenly discover that the controller, in the midst of the struggle, has inadvertently been activated and starts flashing. The dam is about to explode, and everyone runs for their lives, scrambling to escape. Cracks start to appear, water gushes out, seeming like it will surely destroy the village. Luckily, everyone reaches safety, and Conan plans to save everyone in the village. With the snowboard, he rushes towards the ski slope to stop the flood. The water from the dam is behind, Conan takes a shortcut through the forest to reach the ski slope, but the board gets wet and starts malfunctioning. Despite everything, Conan switches to the strongest sliding mode to trigger an avalanche to divert the water flow. Finally, after numerous efforts, the snow starts to crack and pour down below. Conan hurriedly tries to escape on the snowboard, but it's overloaded and heavily damaged, abruptly stopping and burying him under the snow. Ran, Mori, and Sonoko had received information earlier that the dam was likely to be bombed, so they rushed there to prevent it, but they arrived too late as the dam had already burst. Ran saw Conan trapped and could only scream in agony. The water flow automatically changed direction, and the entire village was safe. But Conan was buried beneath it, his body aching and unable to move. People began digging through the snow to find him, with only three minutes left of the 15-minute time frame. Ran dialed Conan's phone number and listened quietly for any sound. She heard it and ran back to where the constant ringing was coming from, digging frantically, but only managed to retrieve his phone. Despite her bloodied hands, Ran continued to dig and call out Conan's name. With less than a minute left of the 15 minutes, time was running out and Ran could only call for Shinichi's help in desperation. She cried out in despair, 
help me, Shinichi. In the thick layer of snow, Conan heard Rant's voice and used all his remaining strength to press the belt buckle. A balloon shot up high, signaling his location to everyone. Ran and the others ran towards him to rescue Conan from the snow pile. She tearfully hugged him, overjoyed that he was still alive. What do you think about this movie? Leave your comments below. Now, thank you for watching until the end of the video. Remember to like, share to support our channel, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to not miss our future videos. See you next time.